What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 324 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Today I want to talk to you about Star Lord and Kitty Pride. Uh, this is a three issue miniseries that ties in with the 2015 Secret Wars uh, miniseries. Uh, this was written by Sam Humphreys with art by, I apologize in advance, uh, Alti Fermansaya. Uh, this also collects Generation Next issue one uh, from the 1990s Age of Apocalypse uh, event uh, that was written by Scott Liddell with art by Chris Boccolo. Uh, and this also collects the uh, X Men Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Black Vortex Omega issue uh, written by Sam Humphreys with art by by Ed McGinnis and uh, Javier uh, Garboni, I believe. And uh, this is possibly one of the shortest of the tie-ins to the 2015 Secret Wars event, and I really wish that it was longer because I absolutely adored this miniseries. Uh, so we start off with Star-Lord from the main Marvel Universe, the 616 reality, and uh, he has made his way to Battleworld somehow. Uh, he kind of glosses over how he got there, and he remembers life before Battleworld. Uh, I don't think that that happened in any of the other tie-ins that I've read. Almost all of them, I believe, uh, the characters, they don't remember life before Battleworld. But uh, this version of Star Lord, he does remember Battleworld, or he remembers uh, what it was like before Battleworld. And uh, he has made a living for himself as a nightclub singer uh, with the alias uh, Steve Rogers, which uh, is very funny. Uh, and he sings Disney songs, because in this particular region of Battleworld, there are no Disney movies. And so he is uh, making a killing uh, doing that, and that's very funny also. And then uh, he sees this other version of Kitty Pride, uh, who I believe is the Age of Apocalypse Kitty because she has uh, the Wolverine claws, and uh, that is something that the Age of Apocalypse Kitty Pride had. And uh, he basically inserts himself into this adventure that she's going on where she is uh, trying to collect an anomaly uh, from uh, this particular version of Gambit. And uh, her job, she works for the Science Council of Doctor Doom, and uh, she is trying to uh, collect various anomalies that possibly prove that Doctor Doom uh, is not the creator of all life. And then she tells uh, Peter Quill uh, that uh, that's not exactly her job. Uh, basically, they're trying to debunk that these things actually are anomalies, and they're trying to prove that, yes, they were created by Doctor Doom. And then uh, she finds out that Peter Quill himself is an anomaly, so she kind of ropes him into this adventure, and then uh, they both get kidnapped at one point, uh, and it is a very fast-paced uh, adventure. Uh, and like I said, uh, it's only three issues long, but I really wish that it was a couple issues longer. Uh, I love the relationship between these two. I was not sold on this relationship before I read this book, and I'm still not 100% sold on it in the main Marvel Universe because uh, Star Wars does not strike me as the kind of guy that Kitty Pride would get with. Uh, I'm not even a Kitty Pride fan. I don't really like the character from what I've read, uh, which is quite a bit of X-Men stuff, uh, but I don't think that these two characters would have necessarily ended up with each other other than uh, the creators thought, hey, this will be something new that we can try out. Uh, but I do like the relationship between this particular Star Lord and this particular Kitty Pride. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the TV series Fringe uh, from around like season four, maybe. So a little bit of spoilers for that show if you haven't seen it. Uh, in Fringe, uh, Peter Bishop uh, and Olivia Dunham, they eventually fell in love. And then Peter Bishop was erased from the timeline. And then he was put back in the timeline, but nobody remembered him, uh, including Olivia Dunham. So he was trying to kind of recreate this relationship with her, but she didn't know who he was. And that's kind of like what we've got going on here where uh, Peter Quill, uh, he remembers his relationship with his version of Kitty Pride but this kitty doesn't know him from anybody, and so she doesn't really want to have a relationship with him, uh, but then we sort of get to see a relationship evolve between these two characters, and that's another reason that I do wish this had been a couple of issues longer, because I feel like this story uh, happens over the span of like 24 hours, and we have this hard-as-nails Kitty Pride who suddenly goes soft and falls in love with uh, Peter Quill uh, over the course of this story. If it had been a little bit longer, I could have bought uh, that she would have fallen in love with him over the course of a longer period of time. Uh, that's always a complaint that I have about uh, various stories where the two characters are obligated to fall in love, and then they do over a very short period of time. I think if this had been five issues longer, I think maybe I could have bought it a little bit more. Uh, but uh, I still really love this story uh, with that being really my only complaint. Uh, I love the depiction of Drax in this. Uh, I think he is hilarious. He maybe stole the show. Uh, this is really fun. Uh, at times, uh, I'm very surprised by some of the events that happen here. Uh, I like uh, the use of Widget, who you may remember 
Excalibur from uh, the late 80s, early 90s Excalibur comics, and uh, this kind of makes use of some of the mythos surrounding that character from those comics. Uh, I was very surprised by this. Uh, like I said, uh, I've never been uh, on board with the relationship of Star Lord and Kitty Pride, uh, but this book uh, definitely made me enjoy these two as a couple. Uh, and then we have the uh, Black Vortex issue, which uh, makes absolutely no sense to me because I have not read the rest of Black Vortex. Uh, almost nothing in this issue made any sense at all. Uh, it feels like it's one of those things that was written uh, with the expectation that you have read the previous like 12 parts of the story, which I have not. Uh, and yes, there is a big long text page at the beginning of the issue explaining everything that's happened before, uh, but I shouldn't need to have a text page at the beginning of the issue. Everything should make sense in the context of the issue itself. Uh, so that issue, I can't tell you anything about it. Uh, maybe if you've read Black Vortex, maybe that issue will work for you. Uh, eh, it didn't really work for me. And then you had the Generation Next issue, uh, which is a little bit better because it's the beginning of the story. It's the first issue of a four-issue miniseries. And uh, I like that miniseries. I like the Age of Apocalypse as a whole. Uh, so I would recommend that you read that and the rest of the Age of Apocalypse. Uh, and I would recommend that you check out this book here because it's awesome. And I wish that there was an entire series exploring uh, Star Lord and this uh, Age of Apocalypse Kitty Pride uh, going on adventures in an alternate reality. Uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I think you guys will as well. Uh, so those are my thoughts on uh, Star Lord and Kitty Pride. I hope that you guys uh, liked this review. And if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back tomorrow with a different video. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.